Hello, this is BioEnchanted, and welcome to my Let's Play of Disney's Bolt on the Xbox. This is a game I quite enjoy. It's got a lot of uh, a very wide variety in its levels, and it has its own little plot that follows the story of the TV show that Bolt uh, stars in in the movie, not the actual movie itself. So let's get stuck in, shall we? so nice to be here. So, fasten your seatbelts for six discs and over 940 non-stop explosive minutes of high-octane adrenaline-charged bolt action! <laughs> Most noble magic box, may you run glitch-free with courage and fortitude. Let the awesomeness commence! <laughs> I really like that framing device that this whole thing is basically Rhino watching Bolt's TV show. That's a really cute framing device for the game. Of course, this doesn't follow an entire series of a TV show that would be ridiculous, but it's a good arc. Yeah. So here's the basic controls of the game, for Penny at least. Of course, we have two sets of characters, two, well, two characters to play as. This is the stealth stuff we play as Penny. Unfortunately, this game doesn't actually have subtitles, so we can't put those on uh, as I find my own cost in a minute. Yeah, just uh, no subtitles, which is a shame, but yeah. But I also quite like that because it's the whole frame device, uh, when you're pausing it, it's kind of like Bolt pausing to. No, not Bolt, but Rhino pausing to do something like a bathroom break or going to refresh his drink, that kind of thing, which is kind of cute. And of course, the sneaking mechanics are fairly basic, but they do the job fairly well. Now here we're coming up with the first uh, collectible in the game. Uh, there are two sets of collectibles, well really three. One set for Penny, which are these the power upgrades for her, which increase her power meter. She doesn't actually have a health meter though because uh, her stuff's entirely stealth. So if you get caught, it's game over. You just have to kind of... Uh, I mean, there are kind of ways to get around that, like there is a bit of a combat thing Penny can do. She can take care of it until she gets caught. It's not instant game over, that would be frustrating. But uh, she can't really fight them off as effectively as Bolt can. She can't just fight all of the goons at once with no consequences. She had, does have to be somewhat careful. <laughs> There's not good kind of hidden behind the camera a little bit there. I can actually see in that room ahead of time. I believe that's the room we'll end up in at the end of the video. Time to see Penny being kind of stone cold. <laughs> Of course, uh, the uh, beginning of this arc is Penny infiltrating Calico's mansion to try and find out what's going on here. 
Of course, it's the usual thing. Her father's been kidnapped. It's time to save him because that's how the TV show that Bob was in worked. There's one big up as well. One of the stupidest criticisms I ever heard of this game when watching reading reviews of it was this complaint that John Travolta didn't come back to appease his role as Bolt. And it's just like, that's not the casting department not having the budget or anything, mate. That's just the Bolt isn't going to talk in this game because Bolt doesn't talk. In the movie, he talks for us because it's our viewpoint character. We hear his thought process, basically, and his interactions with the other animals, but this is the TV show he starred in, in which he was just a dog. A dog with superpowers, but he's still a dog. You can't expect that much from him. He doesn't actually speak English. But this game does have pretty good characterization, though, for the characters later on. Like, it does do a good job humanizing Penny and... I'd say humanizing Bolt too, but you know what I mean. Like, dogonizing Bolt, I guess. Oh. Kenizing? That could work better. But of course, you have a few quick time events to do, but they don't really get too in the way. And also, sometimes you have to use the vision to see where you meant to go next, but often it's quite straightforward, like here. But I kind of went a bit quick here, because that guy saw me. So this shows off what happens if you get spotted as Penny. You can't really fight them properly, but you get a lot of quick time events. If you fill a quick time event, I believe it's game over, but you can at least, like, uh, that gives you an out if you screw up the, uh, cell. But overall, with this game, I do quite like the writing. It's, uh, as you'll see in the upcoming cutscenes and the whole thing with Rhino, it's got a lot of cute ideas of uh, how the characters interact and things, and the whole Rhino phone device is really good, which I really like it. At the end of the level, there's actually going to be some pretty fun dialogue as well, so... Of course, here's Penny's next manoeuvre, ability to turn temporarily invisible. And that's the last power upgrade for this level. I'll be trying to find as many of these upgrades and secrets as I can. I know I can find a lot of them, it's just when I first played through the game, I couldn't find them all, and there's no FAQs for it, so I happen to just do my best with, what, with my own playthrough. So if I miss something, I'll miss it and I won't know. <laughs> but I'll do my best to be as thorough as I can and find everything I can find. But here we have a cute little uh, use of the uh, wheel bar mechanic. I quite like this little bit here because it's not it doesn't look the same as all the other wheel bar things so it can actually go up the chimney which is a neat idea. The levels have interesting designs behind them, at least visually. And they do get quite hard towards the end as well. This game gets quite difficult. Mostly in platforming, but sometimes, uh, the, of course there is combat, we're only seeing pennies half of the game right now, but uh, the combat does get quite difficult later on. But we'll discuss that at the end of this section of the level, which is coming up now. This means we're at the end of the level. Why keep the professor alive if he refuses to cooperate? Because he's the only person who can finish the weapon's installation. Calico says the key is his daughter. If we catch her, the professor will do whatever we ask. Uh. Uh. It's the girl! Where's the dog? Uh. Bulb Sicko! Also, a neat thing with the writing in this game is that everything Bolt does is coded as a command that Penny gives him. In this case, Sickum, but of course there are other commands later on for Recon and things like that, which I quite like. So before we actually beat up all these goons, let's find these three secrets in this arena, because of course even these little arena levels have actual secrets to find in them. And there we go. And one thing I quite like with Bot's combat is it's very satisfying, like the hits feel like they hit quite hard because of that. The environmental damage is so much fun to watch. And there's a lot of like cracking of floors and breaking of windows when there's windows to break, that kind of thing. It's just a satisfying combat uh, engine because of all the environmental damage you can do. Like there, just throwing that guy straight out the window is amazing. 
But of course, I'll be doing as much damage to this as I can be while fighting these guys. Because why wouldn't you? It's just fun. And also, something I quite like, as you can see at the moment, we have the right trigger invulnerability, but we also have the right bumper, which allows us to do super speed right now. That's the only. That's the only superpowers we have right now, but each superpower we get will go onto a different shoulder button, which means you have access to all of them at once. Which essentially means uh, when we get towards the end of the game, we'll be able to just pull out mechanics like we are right now, actually, with this slam attack, and the, it's basically how it uses his super strength, along with the actual beat and goons up and everything like that. But the slam is his real super strength move. But we can just use that, we can throw in the speed to dodge enemies, you can do the invulnerability to block. We can just do any of that in any order as long as we have the power meter to do it. And it's quite satisfying to just bring it all together and be able to just use any attacks that you have available. Uh, just whenever you can pull them out, there's no need to do any complicated combos to do the attacks or anything like that. And of course the B commands are quite fun as well, there's uh, one for each shoulder button. And those are quite fun to watch. I quite like the Y one where he just does this thing where he kind of like slams them back and forth between uh, foreground and background, kind of under behind him. Which is a very common fighting game move, but it's really funny to see a tiny little dog doing it. Just generally, this is a fun engine because you're seeing a very small dog doing all this. I also quite like that seeing his eyes glow as well when you're using his superpower. So that's a cute little visual touch. Uh, when you're using like the super slam and things, you can briefly see his eyes start to glow. Because of course that's how the uh, how his powers manifest themselves physically in the glowing eyes and the glowing bolt on his side. I was quite like how much we wrecked the room already. Just a really satisfying thing. And here's the end of this level now. Time to fight a helicopter. It's a fairly basic helicopter fight, really. Use the boosters, get a little bit ahead of the bullets, just to make absolutely sure I don't accidentally run into them on the initial volley, of course. And then it's just running in circles, so it stops firing. And then we'll have a quick time event, and repeat that multiple times. But that is a funny enough introduction to the combat system, though. We'll get some new powers quite quickly after this video as well. Like in the next couple of videos, we'll be getting quite a few new to toys to play with. So it's uh, not like we'll be stuck with just these few moves at our disposal for the entirety of the uh, first half of the game or whatever. We'll actually it'll actually open up fairly quickly. But it's just generally I've had a lot of fun playing this game, even when it got quite difficult. It was difficult in an interesting way that I maybe kind of have to think about how to deal with the different enemy types and things like that, and when to use certain powers in certain circumstances. But we'll see that when we unlock the powers for now. Now we only have a very basic arsenal of dodge, block, and uh, shockwave attack. Let's just keep dodging a bunch of these missiles, shall we? And that's just really satisfying to this part, really, just throwing the missile back at the helicopter, that was what sold me on this game initially. Where's my dad? <laughs> In the Yucatan jungle, at Calico's Temple hideout. Which jungle? I don't know. Uh. Lamanai. Lamanai in your Belize, of course. You can't win. There are too many of us. Are you gonna hurt him? Your dad? I don't know what Calico's gonna do to your I father. I was talking to my dog. <laughs> what are they all defending? I'm gonna figure it out. Well, go play. Oh. And there's the recon command, go play. Which is a cute way of using that command, really. And I also really like the writing in that cutscene with, like, Bolt beating the thug with his piano and everything like that. That was just a really funny visual. Just because of that giant piano in the tiny little dog's mouth. It's just adorable. And it's just a strong example of why I love the writing in this game. But I'll see you for the next level. Uh, so, 
I hope you've enjoyed this so far. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.